It seemed like an ordinary fever, but after Serapi's son was given medication to reduce his temperature, his nose began to bleed. The other hospital gave me the medicine and told me to take him back home. No blood test, even if he has a high fever. They might have known if they did a blood test. The doctors did not realize Serapi's son had dengue fever, also known as breakbone fever, because victims feel intense joint and muscle pain. Its symptoms are often confused with influenza. But many patients develop a deadly complication called dengue hemorrhagic fever, or DHF. The World Health Organization says more than 20,000 people around the world, mostly children, die each year of DHF, most of them in the tropical developing nations of Africa, Asia, and Latin America. This kind of disease is endemic. In Thailand, it is like a cycle. When the, uh, the ep epidemic years come, the case will rise more than 100,000 cases per year. Dr. Anut Tarasak Ratatatat of Thailand's Department of Disease Control hopes that one day dengue will be prevented by a vaccine like the one that helped contain polio. The United States Army Medical Corps has been studying dengue for 100 years. Lieutenant Colonel Stephen Thomas heads the U.S. Army's Dengue Vaccine Development Program in Bangkok. It was really during World War II when uh, they started to uh, experience dengue virus infections and it, and it had a huge impact on the ability of the troops to do their job. And it was at that time that um, dengue research in the military and, and the idea of developing a dengue vaccine started to, uh, uh, to really take off and, and to blossom. In this Royal Thai Army building, scientists at the U.S. Armed Forces Research Institute of Medical Science, or AFRIMS, study thousands of blood samples trying to conquer dengue. But with four types of virus, it is not an easy task. We've had vaccine candidates that we've, uh, that we've given to uh, U.S. adults, and we've said, this does not generate any immune response. So we have to throw this away. Scientists in this facility, the largest U.S. Army medical research laboratory outside the United States, have worked for decades battling dengue. For Thomas, a physician, the motivation to persevere comes from meeting its victims. All you have to do is walk across the street to the Queen Circuit National Institute of Child Health during dengue season, and the dengue ward is filled with kids that are suffering from this disease. The Queen Sirikid Institute is Thailand's foremost dengue treatment center. It is here Dr. Suchitra Nimanitia developed the Dengue Diagnostics and Treatment Manual adopted by the WHO. She works closely with the U.S. Army Laboratory, getting early confirmation of her diagnoses. Our long-term collaboration leads to more knowledge and understanding of the disease. Suchitra shares her expertise with other medical professionals. They have confirmed that Serapi's son has indeed developed DHF and is in the most deadly stage, called dengue shock syndrome. Patients in this condition succumb to massive internal bleeding and organ failure if not properly treated. He received uh, two times blood transfusion to correct the bleeding from the nose. <coughs> and now uh, his bleeding stopped, seemed to be all right. Serapi is happy that her son is recovering but doctors say more lives could be saved if only there were a vaccine. The disease is increasing everywhere, not just in Southeast Asia, but it's a global problem. So I think uh, we need a vaccine. The U.S. Army is testing a possible vaccine in the U.S. and Thailand, but Thomas thinks many questions about how the virus behaves and spreads globally will remain unanswered, even with a vaccine which he says will spur more research and discovery involving the disease. For producer Prost Laput, this is Kate Pound Dawson, VOA News.